Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Governor Whitmer makes her plea for help. The dire circumstances she says the state will face if the government doesn't step in. But we begin with chaos surrounding the Wayne County canvassing vote. Two GOP members of the board say they want to flip flop yet again. And that decision comes as the president and Rudolph Giuliani zero in on the Detroit vote. There are multiple new developments to a story that's now made national headlines. And here's what we know as we come to you at the five o'clock hour. Last night, GOP canvassing board members Monica Palmer and William Hartman attempted to change their votes once again, this time to not certify Wayne County's election results after having already voted to do so. It's also emerged that Palmer and Hartman received calls from President Trump. Well, then this morning, the Trump camp filed paperwork to drop a key lawsuit here, a federal lawsuit in Michigan. And as that happened, we've learned two top Michigan GOP lawmakers are headed to the White House tomorrow. Our Grant Herms is following the Trump campaign and its claim of a massive conspiracy. We'll get to him in just a moment. Let's start things off here at five with Rod Maloney and the attempt by these two GOP board members of the canvassing board, Rod, to change their votes yet again. Yeah, Devin, you know, the old legal theory says you can't unring a bell, right? Well, that's kind of what they're looking to do here. These two Republican members of the canvassing board are looking to unvote yet again. These affidavits, legal documents declaring under oath before a notary public, say significant pressure caused Board of Canvassers Chair Monica Palmer and the second Republican, William Hartman, to change their votes initially. Now, Palmer told the Detroit Free Press it was President Trump himself who called her after the meeting the other night looking for this result. She said, quote, he was checking to make sure I was safe after seeing and hearing about the threats and the doxing. In her affidavit, she said the Wayne County election had serious process flaws, which deserve investigation. I initially voted not to certify the election, and I still believe this vote should not be certified, end quote. William Hartman took six pages to explain his decision, saying, quote, I determined that approximately 71% of Detroit's 134 absent voter counting boards were left unbalanced and many unexplained, end quote. He went on to say, quote, I remain in firm belief that the Wayne County vote should not be certified. These are more than clerical errors. But will these legal documents carry any weight? County Board of Canvassers Vice Chair Jonathan Kinlock says absolutely not and found himself in disbelief at Palmer and Hartman's actions. This isn't Hattie Mae um, Cheesecake Factory. This is the Wayne County Board of Canvassers and we have a responsibility um, to carry out official actions on behalf of the public. You can't just so, uh, you know, just so whimsically, whimsically just decide that I'm going to change my vote um, because I'm getting pressure. Now, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson today had a statement out about the situation as well. She said that there is no legal mechanism for them to rescind their vote. Their job is done, and the next step in the process is for the Board of State Canvassers to meet and certify. So who are these Republican Board, board of Canvasser members? What do we know about them, and where do they fit into the scheme of things nationally with this entire story? We'll take that up coming up on Local 4 News at 6. Reporting live from Wyandotte, Rod Maloney. Local four. And we'll see you again at six. Thank you. Meanwhile, the Trump campaign is zeroing in on Michigan's election results and in multiple ways, too. For that part of the story, let's bring in Grant Herms. Uh, Grant, uh, this started with the Trump camp dropping a lawsuit today, though not for the reason that we might think. Yeah, Devin, Kimberly, this was a bizarre move, essentially pinning legal success on something that didn't happen, saying that the Wayne County Board of Canvassers didn't certify the election when they did. And Trump campaign advisor Rudy Giuliani claiming a vast conspiracy to defraud the election. Those claims are unfounded. In a midday press conference, Rudy Giuliani accusing Michigan officials, along with officials from other states, of a massive conspiracy to rig the election for President-elect Joe Biden. The margin in Michigan was 146,121, and these ballots were all cast basically in Detroit that Biden won 80-20. So you see a change as a result of the, of the, of the election in, in Michigan, if you take out Wayne County. Filing in federal court today, the Trump campaign seeking to dismiss its case to stop the certification of Michigan's election. That case was attempting to get the Wayne County Board of Supervisors to decertify. 
Well, they did. But Giuliani and the campaign's filing are wrong. The Wayne County Board of Canvassers did certify the election after that deadlock earlier this week. The two Republicans on the board refusing to certify before changing their votes, only to file sworn statements on Wednesday they wanted to change back. The state saying there's no legal way that can happen. The federal case is one of several the Trump campaign or his supporters have brought against Michigan election officials, including two that were dismissed, although both of those cases are pending appeal. Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist saying today it's time to move on. Voters spoke with a really clear voice in a state that, in the state of Michigan, which Joe Biden won by 15 times the margin that Donald Trump won in 2016. And the Wayne County Board of Canvassers unanimously certified the election results. And I think we need to be moving forward. A local four has also learned that the Speaker of the Michigan House, Lee Chatfield, and Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky will be traveling to the White House tomorrow morning to meet with the president. While it's unclear what the three will be talking about, the Trump campaign has repeatedly floated the idea of getting friendly GOP lawmakers to put alternate electors from their states to send them to Electoral College to vote in favor of the president. Now, it's worth noting that a spokeswoman for Shirky told me just earlier this month that it is important to dispel the idea that legislators can choose new electors because they cannot. Devin? This is a, an extraordinary situation here, Grant, because the cases that the Trump campaign talked about today have both already been undermined rather soundly in court. So interesting to use them or try to use them as evidence. Well, they are still in appeal, but it's also worth noting that these arguments weren't made today in a court where Giuliani would have faced questions from right. a judge. He did this in a public press conference, which is really in public, where the Trump campaign is ultimately hoping that these cases and these arguments will continue to play out. Very different setting. All right. All right, Grant. Kim. In a separate election-related lawsuit, a Michigan Court of Claims judge has asked Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson to respond to two lawsuits brought by activist Robert Davis. David is alleging the Detroit City Clerk did not have the authority to send out unsolicited absentee voter applications. He wants to preserve all election-related materials between the Secretary of State and the Detroit City Clerk, including text messages. Let's move now to today's new coronavirus numbers. The state reporting 7,592 new cases of COVID-19 over the past 24 hours. And we've lost another 134 more Michiganders to the virus over this past day, though that includes 61 from a review of vital records. And late this afternoon, the governor gave an update on the state's response to COVID-19. And dominated by a plea for help from the federal government as this second wave is causing unemployment to spike in Michigan. As Jason Colthorpe reports, the help many Michiganders got during the first wave just isn't there this time around. In her final briefing before Thanksgiving, the governor and her team were very clear in asking people for a difficult favor next Thursday. You're not gathering with people outside of your household this Thanksgiving. It is an act of kindness and love. Bad decisions made at Thanksgiving will mean people will be mourning the deaths of their loved ones by New Year's. In addition to limiting Thanksgiving to your immediate household, the governor is also asking for you to shop local, which would have a greater impact than many might realize. In fact, if we switch one in 10 of our out-of-state purchases to local stores, Michigan would gain $1.2 billion in increased economic activity. Just 10% of your out-of-state purchasing, staying here at home, has a massive impact to these businesses, these families, and right here at home. Governor Whitmer again pleaded for COVID relief from Washington, and she had this direct message for President Donald Trump, who has reportedly invited Michigan Republicans to the White House on Friday. Stop spending energy to mislead about what happened in this election and spend it on a real COVID relief package. That's what the people of our country need more than ever. This election was overwhelmingly decided um, it was a safe, it was a secure, it was a fair election. Joe Biden won the state of Michigan by over 150,000 votes. That's 14 times the margin of 2016. And that was Jason Colthorpe reporting yeah. there. With uh, rapidly increasing case counts now across the country today, the CDC said it is recommending against all travel for the Thanksgiving holiday. They're instead urging Americans to stay home and celebrate with only the people in your household. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with the latest on this new travel warning. 
Yeah, Kim and Devin, so more than a million new cases of COVID-19 were reported in the U.S. just over the past seven days. Unfortunately, having tens of millions of people traveling to different places and gathering with family and friends is only going to add fuel to a fire that is already raging out of control. That the safest way to celebrate Thanksgiving this year is at home with the people who live in your household. We're recommending not traveling this Thanksgiving. Dr. Aaron Saberschatz leads the task force that wrote the CDC guidelines urging Americans to change their traditional Thanksgiving plans. A recent survey found two in five Americans still plan to gather with more than 10 people. You really have to ask yourselves and your loved ones what you're willing to risk. You could infect a family member who could ultimately need hospitalization or unfortunately die from COVID-19. If you do plan to gather with others, the CDC recommends everyone wear masks and sit with their household only. But realize, even getting tested is no guarantee. In order for a test to be positive, you have to have enough viral load in your system. So it's possible that you could have a negative test on Tuesday, and then the next day, Wednesday, you go in. If you were to be retested, you would have a positive test. The safest choice? Celebrate separately. There are ways that we can still connect as family and friends and, and spend the holiday together, even if it's virtual. It's a difficult decision Dr. Saberschatz is having with her own parents. I know that the safest choice is to celebrate at home with just my husband and son. And I do not want to put my family at risk because I want to have many more holidays with them in the future. Now, I don't know how to say it more clearly. At this point, our personal choices are either helping fight this virus or they are hurting. And that's a decision that everyone needs to think about very carefully. Back to you. Okay, Dr. McGeorge, thank you. And we are just getting started here on the News at 5. Here's Defender Karen Drew. It was mind-blowing, crazy. A local father says he asked for directions from a police officer. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing, eh? You don't need to touch me like that. And this was the end result. Local board defenders with the exclusive coming up. We are almost 20 degrees warmer than we were yesterday at this time and came within spitting distance of a record high, but the winds are definitely still brisk. We'll look at when everything calms down and if we can keep the warmth into the weekend coming up. The state expecting thousands of new unemployment claims as COVID-19 related closures continue and we have important information to make sure that you get your money and you get it quickly. All right, Hank, also we're getting our first look at the man charged with the murder of a seven-year-old girl. All of that coming up next.